Amen and amen. The title of my message this morning, if you're taking notes, as we continue with our series, prayer is, prayer is release. Prayer is release. Everybody say it with me, prayer is release. Very interesting part of this passage, and I want us to kind of zero in in this passage because the, the truth is this, it's, it's one of those passages that is kind of causes conflict within me. Because the Bible makes it clear that God knows our prayers even before we ask. He already knows what we need. He, he already knows our heart. He knows it all. So why in the world would Paul, why in the world would Paul tell us to bring our requests to God? To present our requests to God. It's kind of like, wait a second, if God knows what I have need of even before I ask, then why do I need to ask God? Because what Paul is trying to encourage us in is he's dealing with, I believe, a dilemma that really is church-wide. And it's something that we all deal with. It's a frustration, I think, that all of us have. And it's this, there are hindrances in our life from getting into the presence of God. And what Paul is encouraging us as a body of believers is this, have audience with God. Paul says all this, he says, do not be anxious about anything, but in all situations, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, have audience with God. Whatever you're going through, go have audience with God. Whatever's happening in your life, go get with God. Now, he may already know what you have need of even before you ask, but Paul says, listen, there's power in having audience with God. There's power in coming before him. There's power in saying, hey, I'm going to get out of my situation. I'm going to go get in my prayer closet. I'm going to go have audience with the maker of heaven and earth. That's what Paul is encouraging us with. And this morning, if there's anything that you can take away from this message, if there's anything that you remember this week, it's this, have audience with God. Whatever you're going through, whatever situation you're facing, have audience with God. See, one of the powers of prayer is the release. I love as, as we continue on this trend within this passage, 1 Peter chapter 5. I love this. 1 Peter chapter 5. Even Peter has the revelation. 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Now, I just got to tell you, I love this word. Because in, in the original context, that word cast all your cares, it's, it's an actually, it shows a picture of a throwing. Now, when I grew up, I used to play football with my dad, and we'd, we'd go to the backyard and we'd throw the football around. And I could expect that when I threw the ball at my dad, he'd throw it back to me. But see, what... What Peter is really saying is when he says, cast all your cares, he's giving us the picture that what I want you to do is I want you to take that situation, take that anxiety, take that hurt, whatever it may be, and I want you to throw it at God and let it go. Now, I don't know if, if you have the same tendencies that, that I have, which is I throw it at God, but I got a string attached to it. And so when I need it a little bit later, I'll throw it and I'll be like, can I have that back, please? And, and it's really what it is, is it's a yo-yo principle. I'll throw it, but then I need it back when I need it back. Lord, give me that bitterness because I need it right now. Lord, give me that fear because I need it right now. And we throw all these things at God and release it, but we've got a string attached to it. What, what is Peter telling us? He says, listen, come to a point in your relationship with the Lord, even in your prayer life, that you can throw things on God, cast all your cares, throw it on God. Why? Because he cares for you. He's, he's not sitting there going, no, 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 no. Have you, anyone here, I, I remember one time I got, I got straight up hit in the face with a baseball. Anybody ever, that happened to, I was, I was throwing the ball with one of my friends. I had a, 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 a mitt and we were throwing and we were just having fun and somebody called me and I was like, and of course, it was a girl. And so I, I turned my head and I'm looking, I'm like, hey, what's up? And right when I turn my face, the ball's already coming, poof, hits me in the face. Yeah, my wife's like, that's what you get. That's right. She wants your wife. 
I love you. I'll get you later. Anyways. But you know, many times we kind of, we kind of feel like God's just going to throw it back at us. Did you, you hear what I just said? I think sometimes we feel like God's going to throw it back at us. But you see, when you throw it at him, it's about release. When you come to the Lord, prayer is releasing it to God, giving it to him, saying, Lord, this is yours. I release it. It's, it's no longer attached to me. It no longer defines me. It's no longer mine. It's yours. I put it in your hand. I don't want it back. Now, he's not sitting there going, mm -mm, no, I don't think so. I, I, I love how Peter, he makes it clear to us, doesn't he? He says, cast all your cares on the Lord because he cares for you. He loves you so much. He cares for you. He has no, he has no problem caring what you got. You know, I was, I, was, I was raised by a mother and two older sisters. My dad was there, but, you know, they, they, they wanted to make sure that I knew how to treat a lady. And so my sister Jamie, my, my sister Jamie, their, their favorite shows, and some of you guys might know what I'm talking about, their favorite shows growing up were Anne of Green Gables and Avon, Anne of Avonlea. Anybody seen those demonic movies? All right, anyways. Um... <laughs> It's a cult! Anyways, um, so there, we, so much so, now listen to me, so much so that we took a vacation to Prince Edward Island just so we could see where Anne of Avonlea and Anne of Green Gables walked. We had a deliverance session after that, I'm just telling you right now. Well, so... My sisters are like, you know, the whole chivalry thing and, you know, when you see a girl carrying books... You need to go carry her books. And so there's this girl that I liked. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to carry her book. The thing was, it was only one book. And so I walk up to her. I said, can I carry your books? This was her response. Book. Singular. Book. Sorry. Thank you. Can I carry your book? She's like, no, I got it. I'm like, no, 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 please let me carry your book. No, I, I got it. No, let me carry your book. I'm a man. I want to show you what kind of man I am. Carry your book. So she gives me her book, and I'm like, yeah. And now, can I tell you, I was walking up those stairs with this little book in my hand. I'll tell you, I felt so proud. I was like, that's right. This is her book. And people would be looking at me. I'm like, you see whose book I'm carrying? That's right. That's her book. That's right. Now, you may laugh at that and think that's silly. But, you know, I want to just kind of show you the heart and the character of God. He loves carrying your stuff. Why? Because he loves you. You're his child. He loves you. He has, he has no problem picking that up and say, this is my child's stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry this for them. Power of prayer is in the release. Psalm 55, 22, the psalmist has an incredible revelation. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Now this is a promise and, and this isn't just a promise of assumption. This is a, prob a promise from experience. That the psalmist had gone through certain things in his life and he realizes something. That when I cast my cares, you see, there were moments where I was carrying my issues and my problems and it led to me stumbling and being shaken. But the moment I, I put it into his hands, it was almost like the Lord in his power came and he sustained me. He, lift, he lifted me up. And instead of that weight weighing me down, he lifted me up. And then he says this. The righteous will never be shaken. What was that? From experience, let me tell you something. The righteous will never be shaken. He says, I was, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. See, it, 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 you, when you make a statement 
the audacity of this, this man to make a statement this way. Who does he think he is? I'm a man that has experienced the sustaining power of God. I'm a man that has experienced those moments where I've taken those burdens and those weights and those cares and I've given it to God. He has sustained me. He has protected me. See, there's a call to us this morning. And it's a call really to change. And I hope you can hear my heart. It's to change the way you pray. If there's anything that I can accomplish this morning, I want to change the way you pray. I don't, I don't want you to think that you have to keep holding on to that stuff when he's done everything necessary to lift that off your shoulders. Matthew, verse 11, 28 through 30 says this, Come to me. This is Jesus He's saying, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we understand this morning, if there's anything that you're hearing, it's hear the call of the Lord saying, hey, cast your cares on me. Cast your cares on me. But I think... If, if we could deal with this just for a moment, if you, can, if you can just stick with me so we can deal with this for a moment, I think all of us have natural tendencies. Like, for example, my natural tendency is to carry the weight and be like, dude, I got this. Anybody know what I'm talking about? This is my weight to carry. And, and it's the, we grew up with this idea of I just got to deal with it. Right? Well, this is my problem. This is my issue. Now, can I just start off? Let me, let me preface everything I'm about to say with this. This is important. I remember when I was a youth pastor, I had a young man come up to me and say, Pastor, pray for me. So, okay. I'm really feeling anxious, and I've got a really big exam tomorrow, and I, I need God to help me. I, I have to pass this exam, or else I'm going to fail school. And I'm not going to be able to play football. And I, I'm, I, I, Pastor, please pray for me. And I said, well, okay, well, before I pray for you, did you study? Well, that's why I need a miracle. <laughs> no, did, did you study? And so my prayer was this, and some of you may, may be frustrated at me, but my prayer was this, Lord, I pray that you bring back to remembrance everything this young man has studied. And he's looking at me like this. Seriously? Pastor, I need a miracle. So I, I want to be careful because can we, can we just be honest? Sometimes the weight that we carry is a self-inflicted weight that the only way to get rid of this weight is to do what you know to do. I know this is hard. Now listen, curl your toes in just for a second. But, but sometimes, I mean, honestly, look, look, Thursday, I was having an anxiety attack. This last Thursday, I was having an anxiety attack. Can I tell you why? My wife was coming home. And I know that her primary love language is acts of service. And the house was a mess. <laughs> I mean, I, I couldn't sleep. I, I couldn't do anything. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, God, carry this weight. And the whole time, the Lord's like, pick up your socks. God, I need your help. Put, do some laundry, dude. Come on. Help yourself. But, uh, but so can we deal with this? Because I think a lot of times we want to throw things on God that, that God says, listen, you, you need to do the things that you know to do. Amen. But then the worst part is we get mad at God because we didn't do the things we knew to do. Thank you very much. I heard that hello and I'm with you. Right? And so can we, can we just, that was, all, that was like perfect timing. I, was, I like that. Hello. So, so can we just be, and some of you guys are looking like, man, he is like sweating really. How, it's heavy. Anyways. I need you to hear this, please. Because many times we get mad at God and we say, well, Lord, you're not taking this from me. How come you're not helping me? And the Lord will help us. He is a God that intervenes in every situation in your life. And, and, and can we just say this? 
even beyond what I just said, can I balance that with this? That his grace is sufficient. That even in times, the things that you knew to do and you didn't do it, God is gracious enough to step into those moments and say, all right, son, I see what's going on. Let me help you. Hello? Even in our inadequacies, he'll help us and he has grace. But please don't get mad at God. If you're carrying something right now, you've got anxiety in your life, you've got these different things because you did not do what you knew to do. Sometimes what needs to happen is we've just got to step in and and be diligent. Amen? But beyond that, I want to talk about this because this is wonderful. Because we have a God that wants us, that desires us to cast our cares on him. But we have to deal with the, our mindsets, those tendencies of, well, I just grew up hearing that I just have to deal with it. I've got a sickness. I've got a problem. I've got an addiction. I've got issues in my life. I just got to deal with it. Now, how many of you grew up having someone tell you, dude, just deal with it? Anybody with me? Now, see, there's a good balance between me and my wife. My wife is ultra compassionate. She cries with people. My kids, they'll fall, they'll skid their knees, she'll pick them up, and the kids are crying, my wife's crying, they're crying together. I'm like, dude, deal with it, get over it. Come on. There's no, Moroccos don't cry. Right? But we're trained to think that way, and so even in church, we're like, I just got to deal with it, I got I to gotta carry my own weight. And so we live life weighed down and bogged down by these different things that we're going through, these anxieties, these cares. And can I just say it doesn't matter how big or how small a care is a care. All your cares he wants to lift and he wants to carry. So we have this tendency, well, I just have to deal with it. This is just my cross to carry. No, the Lord wants to carry that for you. He wants you to cast that care on him. Or, or, or this one, we, we know that it's, it's weird, but we want to convince people, oh, this is natural. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, no, just, you know, it's just, just this is how I was raised. I was, I was raised to be angry. It's just, that's just natural. I was raised to be, be bitter. No, maybe, maybe, you know, I'm, Maybe you don't deal with that, but I've, I've dealt with things like that. Raised, I was raised this way. And so we actually try and convince ourselves that this weight that we're carrying is, is a natural thing. And we try and convince ourselves that the problem is this. If you accept it as, oh, this is just a part of life, this is just natural, then you'll keep it. And the whole time God's sitting there going, here, just give it to me. You don't have to carry that. No, 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 Lord, I have to. No, just give it to me. No, 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 Lord, you don't understand. I have to. No, you don't. It's unnatural. It's hurting you. It's killing you. You don't have to live with this. Amen? Or this one. Are you ready for this? Can we keep going? You make excuses for it. (laughs) I'm the only one that's ever done that. You make excuses for it. Well, it's because this happened in my life. And we want to make sure that for every weight that we carry, there's an excuse on why it's there. And for some of us, we hold it almost like it's trophies, right? Of look at my excuse. But you don't have to live like that. Or how about this one? We pretend it doesn't exist. (laughs) What weight? What problem? It's not my problem. That's your problem. It's not my attitude. Look, it's not my attitude that's the problem. It's yours. And we try and pretend it doesn't even exist. And it's there. It's protruding out of your life. It's like, duh, dude, hello. <laughs> and that is so heavy. We try to ignore it, don't we? The problem is you can't ignore it. It begins to hinder your life. And the more you live with this thing, it it hinders you. It hinders your relationship with people. It hinders your relationship with the Lord. It hinders your prayer life. It it hinders everything that God wants to do in you and through you. And it's protruding out of your life. And people are looking at you going, you love God, but that thing doesn't line up. I I don't understand. You, You say you're a Christian or you say you love the Lord, but that weight that you're carrying doesn't match what you're, what? Look, 
friends, listen to me. We all deal with this. I'm not calling anybody a hypocrite. I'm not calling anyone a sinner. All I'm saying is this, that sometimes we carry weights that we were never meant to carry. Sometimes we we carry sorrows and anxieties that we don't have to carry any longer. You can give them to the Lord. I need my, uh, Glenn, can you help me, please? I need my volunteer here. You know, the worst part is this, if you don't release it, if you don't let go of it, eventually, you know what happens? The devil starts using it against you. He starts poking at it. Oh, look at this in your life. Ha, ha, ha. And he starts using it to his advantage. Or he starts taking it and bashing you upside the head with it. Every time you come into the presence of the Lord, he starts reminding you of that weight. All right, you can't worship God with both your hands raised. Look at you, you hypocrite. How dare you preach the gospel to someone else when you're battling this? Who do you think you are believing for a miracle when you still have this in your life? Uh, so nobody else here. <laughs> okay. I think this, this, this probably is a common, a common occurrence, isn't it? He takes that weight and he begins to use it against us. We've got to get rid of it. Becomes, because it becomes toxic. It becomes poison to you. Cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. How about this one? Our tendency is to try and get help. Help, please. And so, you know, now, now you need to hear this. Can you carry just a little bit more? Thank you. This is my, this is my bad arm. Um, so, anyways... The Bible makes it clear, and we, we preach this every single week. You'll hear me say this. Carry one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now, one of the reasons we exist as a church, one of the reasons we have small groups and ministries and, and create opportunity for one-on-ones is because we want people to carry one another's burdens. Why? Because it makes the weight a lot easier to carry. But there's something that we have to be mindful of. It's great when you have a burden or an anxiety or, or, or issues in your life to come to someone and say, hey, man, I need you to come in agreement with me in prayer because there's power in agreement, right? But can I ask everyone to be mindful of something? First of all, the Bible does not say carry one another's offenses. It does not say that. And the epidemic within the church is this. We, we expect people to carry our offenses. Now, One thing that you have to realize about when you get help, it's this. That when you have somebody else carry that burden with you, number one, it normally sticks with them. But secondly, they they do not have the power to break the yoke. They don't have the power or the ability in themselves to help you free you from that and so while it's still attached to you it now becomes attached to them they ain't god you can't just give it to them and say it's yours you're now now you got two people carrying this weight three people four people five people now listen i i'm not telling you not to come into agreement with people and have people pray for you that is why we exist as a church but be mindful of something that's not your solve all don't keep going to people and not go to God. You go to people so that you can go to God together. I said power and agreement. Don't just go to people and say, okay, there's a lot of people that know my issue. No, no, no. You get people to come with you to God to build on your faith and help you with your faith and, and come into agreement with you and you're going to see. And so then you lift that thing together and you say, okay, God, we give it to you. But can I share something with you? Because this is what I've seen in the church. Is when you don't understand that, oh, we give our offenses to one another. You give somebody that offense and say, I had an offense toward my wife. And I started sharing, Glenn, I need you to help me carry this offense with my wife. My wife, she did this and she did that. And she left me for a whole week to go to Scotland. She doesn't, she loves Scotland more than she loves me. Right? Well, pretty soon, he starts helping me carry that offense. The problem with that is this. 
Now, my wife and I, we fix what's going on. I realize my wife actually loves me more than she loves Scotland. And we fix that problem. But I just left Glenn carrying the offense. And even though we fixed it, now he's got the offense. That's why you have to be careful. When you get help, make sure that you're getting help directed to Christ to help someone build up your faith, to help someone carry you to that place of release. I said carry you to that place of release, not more bondage. Because the problem I've seen is you got this person with weight and this person with weight, and they're all holding all their weights together. My weight is your weight, and your weight is my weight. This, this isn't what it's supposed to be. Everybody with me? Give it up for Glenn. He's so... Thank you, man of God. Thank you. Oh, can you take that weight down with you? No, just joking. <laughs> See, as much as... Listen, as much as I love... As a pastor, I love counseling people. I love, I love praying with people. Now, listen, I don't, I, don't just, I don't just do it because I have to. I love it. I love when people call me and say, Pastor, can you pray with me about this? And you all know something. Don't ask me to pray for something if you're not willing for me to pray for it right then. You all know how it works. People come up to me and me, hey, Pastor, can you? And they, they kind of walk by, hey, Pastor, can you pray for us in this? this, this? Oh, yeah, come here. Let's pray right now. Wait, what? Oh. I had a lady in the mall did that to me. Oh, it's in a mall. Or was it? It was in a store somewhere. And she came and said, Pastor, you can, you know, pray for me and this and this. And, okay, let's pray. Right now? Yeah, right now. That's Jesus! I started laying hands on her, praying for her. She's all, I, I opened my eyes too just to see, and she's all. No, I love it. Hey, I have no problem with that. I, I love counseling. I love praying for people. I love fellowshipping. I, I love when people say, hey, Pastor, I need you to come into agreement with me on this. I love being a help. But you got to remember something. I'm limited. No, 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 hear what I'm about to say. Don't take it as I'm limited in my time. Don't call me because I'm too busy. Don't, don't take it as that. I'm limited in this. I can help you, but I can't deliver you. I can't heal you. I can't save you. It is only Jesus Christ. Now, I can help you get there. My pastors and my ministers can help you get there, but I'm not the solve all. I'm not the all in all. Everybody with me? See, we, we've got to make sure that we cast our cares on him. Cast your cares on Jesus. In everything in your life, release it to the Lord. Did you know that he's compassionate? He cares for you. Do you know where his compassion came from? Not only does he have the heart of the Father, and some, somebody here needs to hear this, not only does Jesus have the heart of the Father, but he experienced, he had hands-on experience of your burden, your pain, your anxiety, your fear. Why? Because he went to that, when he went to that cross, when Jesus went to the cross, the weight, hear me, are you ready for this? The weight of our sin, the weight of our burden, the weight of our fear, the weight of our anxiety, where'd it go? It went right upon his broad shoulders. So when you come to Jesus, don't come with this attitude like, well, Jesus, I know you don't understand what I'm going through right now, but... Understand that he's a God that has compassion on you because he experienced the weightiness of what you're going through. He can empathize and sympathize with you. Friends, listen to me. Be willing. He's a God of all compassion. He loves you because I've heard a lot of people say, well, pastor, you don't understand what I'm going through. I may not, but he does. He understands and he has compassion towards you. Secondly, he's willing. Jesus is willing to take your burden in your care. He's not going to reject you. Somebody needs to hear this. He's not going to reject you. 
well, he doesn't really care about this. It's not that important. You know, in the scope of things, the person next to me is in a whole lot more trouble than I am. So, you know, they should go to Jesus. For me, I'm just going to, it's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal. And if it's a big deal to you, it's a big deal to him. And he's willing for you to cast that care upon him. Well, pastor, it's just, it's just gas from my car. Cast it on him. Pastor, it's just this relational thing that I'm going through. Cast your care on him. Pastor, it's not a life or death situation. Cast your care on him. He's willing. I like this one. He's able. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. It says this. In that day, the Lord will end the bondage of his people. He will break the yoke of slavery and lift it from their shoulders. Let me end this message simply with this. He has all power. He is able to deal with that which you're carrying. I could, I could go through a whole list of the things which we carry, but I think each one of you, each thing, whether you're carrying a lot of things or one thing, if I can get you to understand and know and be confident of this, that he's able to deal with that which you carry, whether it's relational don't just limit God to a box and say, well, I'll, I'll take my spiritual needs to God. No, every need that you have, whether it's relational, whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual, whether it's psychological, it doesn't matter what it is. You can take it to him because he can deal with whatever situation, whatever storm you're going through, whatever sickness you have, whatever dilemma you're in. Friends, please hear me. Please hear the heart of God in this. I want you to leave this place with a new perspective when you approach God. That that time in prayer, when you come to God, that time of prayer, that is the time for release. Don't leave your prayer closet still holding on to stuff. Don't leave your prayer closet still feeling like i got to walk around for the rest of my life with this. Start believing that there's a point of release where you can put it in the hands of God and He'll take it and He'll carry it. He's able... He's willing. He loves you. Problem's not God. The question we need to ask today is, are you willing to release? He's willing to take it. Are you willing to release it? Well, Lord, I'll release it if you change it the way I need it to be changed. Lord, listen, Lord, you did not deal with that situation the way I felt it should have been done. That dude should be dead right now. He's still living. Oh, come on. David did the same thing. God, strike him dead. Kill him. God, they're not dead yet. God, how come they're not dead? Chapters later. Dude, Jesus. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Now, listen, God. I'm talking like three chapters later. God, now listen, listen. I asked for you to kill that dude. He's not dead yet. Last time I checked, still breathing, still living in a mansion. What is wrong with you? Are you not hearing my prayers? E even David had yo-yo problems. God, I release my enemies to you. Kill them. I release them. Kill them, Jesus. We all struggle with that. But I'm talking about true release. I'm talking about true release, knowing, knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's going to carry it, that he's going to deal with it, and not in a way that just benefits him, but in a way that blesses you. Do you trust God that way? Do you know that you know that you know that right now God's working out, that he's a good God that gives good gifts to his children, that in him he is fully good. He does not have one evil thought towards you. He does not have one evil desire towards you. He does not have one ounce of regret that he ever created you. He loves you. 
and he wants to carry you your burdens your anxiety will you release it to god every head bowed every eye closed